Friday. This is so exciting to have you here as my first guest talking about your concierge greening education is what I feel you provide. You educate people on how to be more eco-friendly and it's such a, um, a hot thing that will only continue to grow. And I'm so excited because I think maybe some people are overwhelmed and uh, burdened by their impact on the planet. You know, questions come up of how can you do something? Like I wanna do something, I wanna take action. So I'm excited to chat with you and hear about how others can take action. So why don't you just start by telling us who you are and about your business? Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, my name is Friday Apoliski, um, Friday like the day. And uh, like you said, my business is Sustainability Concierge. And really, I am just, I got to this place. I started this business because um, I worked in city government uh, around policy and educating people around the environmental policy that was being passed in San Francisco, which was great. But what I found was all of these people that I knew would text me directly all day, every day and be like, I totally get it that there's a climate crisis, but can you just tell me like, what shampoo do you buy? Can you just tell me where to get a good mattress? Can you just tell me like, blah, 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 what's the answer? Yeah. Because a lot of people do feel overwhelmed. The research component is really overwhelming um, and kind of the amount is overwhelming. So what I try and do is while I look at everything inside your home, um, and we really do talk about everything from your heating system to your dental floss, like, and all the things in between, nobody is perfect. Nobody's gonna do all of those things. The intention really is to find what are the things that you can do and do those things. And so if we're all better, then that's really good. That, yeah. that would be a vast improvement. Sure. Um, and so don't beat yourself up about, oh, I don't do enough or I don't do this or I don't do that. Let's try and find some things that you can do and let's do them. Awesome. And I really like to start with things that you can do once and then not have to think about again. Love it. Because Tell us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so many times people want to start their green journey with waste. Yeah. Logical, and waste, right? Like, yeah. I mean, it is logical, but here's the thing. Waste is something that you deal with 10 times a day. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Anytime you're eating something or purchasing something or something is delivered or whatever, you are dealing with packaging and, you know, what goes where all the time. And that is a constant. Yeah. Um, so I like to, if, if I'm talking about waste, I want to start before that point. Mm -hmm. How can we minimize the amount of stuff you have to deal with? Yeah. Or how can we put in one-time changes that then do the hard work for you and you don't have to do so much? So yeah. I am like, lovingly called the light bulb lady, <laughs> which uh, I, I think is fantastic. I could talk about light bulbs all day long. Nice. Uh, I won't, <laughs> but what I really love about light bulbs is that if you change your bulbs to LED, they are instantly going to use 85% less electricity. Wow. So if you don't want to nag on your partner or your kids about turning the lights off all the time, change light bulbs, nice the LED, and then you don't have to nag on them. It doesn't have to be a habitual thing, right? It can cool. just be done. And there's so many other bonuses to LED lights. One is they don't get hot. Oh, so they're not gosh. heating up your house in the summertime when you don't want to have a hot house anyway. Yeah. Um, and you're not burning your fingers, obviously, which is also good. Yeah. Um, but they don't burn out either. Mm. So like a normal light bulb will last a thousand hours approximately and somewhere between a thousand and 2000 hours, which in practice is about a year. Mm. An LED bulb will last for 20,000 hours. 20 so times. You might not replace it for 10 years. Done. done, yeah. done. So, oh. so really it's like one and done. So I am a parent. I totally understand that um, changing all your light bulbs 
is like not going to be the thing that comes to the top of the priority list on a weekend, but try. Um, if it isn't for you, you can call me. I will change all of your <laughs> goals. That is part of what I do. Yeah. But, um, but if you want to do it on your own, um, I highly recommend you do at least one whole room at a time. Sure. Okay. Because That's great. That's very actionable. Like yeah. this weekend, I'm doing my room, all 35 light bulbs. Yes. It's true for some And people. you will be surprised. Yeah. So many people say to me, oh, I don't have that many light bulbs. I bet in my whole house, I only have 10 light bulbs. <laughs> if you tell me that you have 10 light bulbs in your house, a hundred percent, you have 40. Yeah. <laughs> if you tell me that you have 35 light bulbs in your house, a hundred percent, you have 75. Totally. We underestimate, right? Way underestimate. Everybody way underestimates. It's like a normal thing it happens all the time. I have right here next to nice. me two light bulbs. And this is kind of the most important thing that people get wrong is the color. Okay. It's kind of like nutrition facts. Yeah. It's on every single light bulb box. And there's two really important things you want to look for. The first one is color or light appearance. Hmm. And yep. you'll see that this box is 2,700 K. Mm -hmm. And it says warm as well. Yeah, it says warm. That's right. Um, and so 2,700 is about the same as a regular incandescent light bulb. Looks like this. That's this bulb. Mm. You can see that it's pretty warm in color. If you wanted to like put your makeup on in the, in your bathroom or like have your kitchen feel a little whiter and brighter, you might pick like 3000 or maybe 3,500. Um, if you want to be in like a den or like a really cozy space, maybe like next to your bed at night, you mm. might pick something really much warmer, which would be like 2,200. Okay. So the number corresponds to warm and cool. It does. And okay. so I want to show you what cool looks like because yeah. oftentimes you'll find a box that says daylight and you're like, oh yeah, daylight. That seems nice. This is a daylight. Ah, you see very, how blue yeah, that it's, is? It's very, very bright. <laughs> and so if you put them on together, you can see uh, yeah. this is very blue. This is very yellow. Yeah. Gotcha. So the blue color is really nice. Like you'll find it often in office buildings or schools or places where you want to feel awake during the day, dentist yeah. office, a warehouse. But if you have that in your home, it's going to feel really jarring, especially at night Yeah. when you, when you turn it on at night. So steer clear of anything that is 4,000 or above in your home, in your home. I would say, unless you are somebody who really, I have, I have had a few clients who just hate yellow, like they hate it and they love the blue light okay. and some people do, and that's fine, but you just want to know those higher numbers are the blue color, lower numbers are the yellow color. Does either last longer? Like does blue? Nope. nope same amount. Okay. It's cool. just on preference. But what I find happens all the time is that somebody will walk in and say, oh, I have one burnt out light bulb. I need one light bulb. They go to the hardware store. There's a million choices. Yeah. yeah they yeah, end yeah. up with one that is daylight. They <laughs> screw it in and they're like, oh, it doesn't match. It looks terrible. I hate this. And they're like, and this bulb costs $5 or $7. I'm done with this. Yeah. So you want to understand what you're looking for first. Yeah. You want to change your whole room at the same time so that they all look the same. And, um, and then you want to check also on brightness. So that's the other one. So we used to say, oh, I need like a hundred watt light bulb. Mm -hmm. Watts is actually how much electricity a bulb uses. Mm -hmm. um, lumens mm -hmm. is how bright a bulb is. Mm -hmm. So a like normal brightness bulb would be 800 lumens. If you wanted something that was kind of dim, you might go down to like 400 lumens. If you wanted something really bright, like in your kitchen or outdoor light or something like that, you might get 1600 lumens. But lumens is what you're looking for brightness. So you really have to now pick two things, lumens and color. Yeah. Brightness and color. That's awesome. That's really, really valuable information. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the only thing else I will leave you with on yeah. light bulbs, and then we can talk about other things. I have a question Just, though, but yeah, keep going. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I want your question, but I will say if you have a dimmer, 
Yeah. If your bulbs are on a dimmer, you need to make sure that your dimmer um, is matching, is LED compatible. Yeah. If it isn't, your lights will flicker or they won't go down all the way, or they might even make this like buzzing sound. Mm -hmm. That's good. I have a lot of dimmer lights in my home and I do have, I remember to look for that particular feature. Yeah. It's important. They look the same on the outside, but the guts are different. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes. That's awesome. Um, What about disposal? How do you dispose 20 years later? How do we dispose of these things? Well, um, they are basically like little computers. So you're going to treat them like if you're getting rid of an LED bulb, you're going to treat it like e-waste Okay. and take it to like wherever you would take um, a computer or something like that, maybe to yeah. staples. Batteries, cable. Or, or yeah. something. Um, but if you have an incandescent bulb, the ones that you're replacing, they just go in the landfill. Bummer. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that's good. So hopefully- doing it once. Yeah, you're doing it once. Hopefully you'll do it again in 20 years. So you feel good about not throwing things away a lot. Um, And then the cost of them, right? So the cost is now amortized over 20 years, which is huge. So even the cost is going down really every day. Like it used to be that an LED bulb was maybe $10 a bulb. And that was about, I don't know, five years ago. Now I can get bulbs for three or $4 good ones yeah and if you really like if you buy in bulk um or on sale sometimes you can get them for as low as like a dollar fifty amazing yeah and if you're doing like specialized bulbs like those halogen ones yeah um or ones like that they're the same price yeah that's awesome yeah and you're saving all this money you're saving all this energy um it's really it's a great way to like it's a great first step a great first step. And then you see instant results because your electricity bill goes down. Well, that's the real key, right? Is if you're doing one whole room at a time or even one whole house at a time, you will see a very big difference. It's usually about 30% of your overall electricity bill is your lighting. It's amazing. So that, I mean, I have seen clients who lower their bill by a hundred dollars a month. That's significant. That's inspiring. And that's like, I made a change. And it pays back really fast. Yeah. You know, if you're spending a couple hundred dollars on light bulbs for a house full of, you know, 75 light bulbs, maybe you're spending, you know, 500, $600 on light bulbs, but you're saving a hundred dollars a month. That's pretty good payback. Yeah. And then you don't change them for another 20 years. So it's like, wow, there's no reason not to do this. There's no reason not to do it. So that's what, it's one of my favorite things. I It's a little bit wonky, but I'm like, look, if we're going to get started, let's do one thing. You could just do it and be done. Yeah. I mean, I would feel great about that. And, and because it's, because we're spending so much time at home too, it's even more critical. It um, is because, you know, your office buildings that you would normally go to, they've done this already. Totally. And, but now you're, you're working from home and that you really do need that efficiency to move from the office to your house. Yeah, I love that one. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's great. Um, what else would you recommend? What's your second favorite? So on those same lines of like, do it once and be done, mm-hmm. water saving. Mm-hmm. And I know that's like super hot topic in California, always, right? Yeah. We're always in a drought. Yeah. But saving water is also saving energy because all the water that goes down your tap, no matter where you live, is being treated Uh, Well, I should say, if you live in an urban setting, it's being treated by a wastewater treatment facility Mm -hmm. and that takes energy. So the less water you put into the treatment, the wastewater treatment facility, the less energy it has to use. So they're, they're definitely connected. Um, So there's two things. One, your faucet, inside your faucet, there is an aerator. It's just a little plastic thing and you can unscrew um, the little spouty part on your faucet and, um, and replace that aerator from what is standard is 2.2 gallons per minute. Mm. And you can replace it with one that is 1.2 gallons per minute. I see where this is going. That's awesome. So that's 45% less water, just like that. It's amazing. And that's right? like a piece you buy at Home Depot. Yeah, you can get it at Ace Hardware. You can get it anywhere. It literally costs like $3. 
Oh my gosh, I love that. Maybe $7 if you need a fancy one. Yeah, yeah. Um, and every sink has an aerator. So even if you have a very fancy sink, you might find that you can't just screw it from the outside, but you there is a way to unscrew it. Just look really closely and you'll find that you can get in there. And you might also find that there's some debris in your aerator. This is yeah. pretty common. That's okay. why they're there. Yeah. Um, and so it will be good to, you know, knock the debris off, put in a new one. Um, yeah. And, do that. and then that same trick works for your shower head. Yeah. So a normal shower head is going to use two and a half gallons per minute mm -hmm. and a low flow shower head or anywhere, I should say anywhere from 1.5 to 1.8 gallons per minute, which again, that means less harping on shorter showers. Yeah. Right. You can keep your shower the same length and use 30% less. And pretty good. Do you notice it though? Like I can, yeah, that's such yeah. a good question. So <laughs> I have long hair, right? So, and I have been using low flow shower heads for, oh my gosh, 15 years. Um, and here's the deal. A lower flow, it just means less water, but they make the holes smaller. So the water is going through a smaller hole. It feels like more pressure. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> so most people I know, especially with long hair, don't really care about the volume of water, but the pressure of the water, right? That's yeah, what the gets, pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the what pressure I pressure that you care about. And so like rain showers, and sometimes I'll get into a shower like at a hotel or at an Airbnb, and there's like, so much water. It's like a hose, yeah. but it's not forceful. Yeah. I mean, like it's just this, like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't want this. Yeah. 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 So okay. A low flow shower head and you can test it out. Like this doesn't yeah. have to be a super expensive thing. You can go to Ace Hardware, get a $10 shower head. They just screw off. You can usually do it with just your hands. You uh -huh. might need, um, a, a uh, pliers, but it's not, this is not a big deal project. This is a very easy project and start with a cheap one. Start mm -hmm. with a $10 shower head. And if it works okay, then you can get a fancy one. Cause believe me, Kohler and Brizo and all Delta, they all sell two kinds. Mm -hmm. They look exactly the same. It's just, and you can buy the 2.5 gallons per minute or the 1.8 gallons per minute. Cool. on every single style, which is bananas. We yeah. Sell the low one. Yeah. I love, but, that. I love um, knowing that that's really good information. <laughs> yeah. So like if you're remodeling or if you have like a really high style and that's what you want, you do not have to skimp. Yeah. And it doesn't in the effect, if you know, your person taking the shower, isn't really going to notice a difference. They're not. It's like, again, why wouldn't you do that? <laughs> I mean, so easy. if it means that you get to keep that extra minute in the shower, yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Like I I'm already I'm... rushing in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. That's awesome. I think about water a lot. I, you know, live with a family, and some people leave the the faucet on for like minutes. They like leave the sink mm -hmm. and do something, and it's still flowing. And I'm like, oh my, God. I like growing up in California and having to be aware and conscious of droughts. I, like well, that faucet, <laughs> you should change that faucet yeah, to 0. 0.5. You can get a 0. 0.5 aerator, which is like, I tried it on my family and they were like, this is too low. <laughs> but if you have somebody who is walking away from the sink, that's what they get. Be that's like, I'll get to first to 0.5 until you learn to turn the sink off. Right. Oh my gosh. You're right. <laughs> I'm like making a list in my head when next time I go to Ace Hardware, I'm like, yeah. I've got all the things I need to buy. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. So I think those are two really good, like you can do it right now. Yeah. And then if you want to like get really down the road on habits and packaging and things like that, that is really about, you know, the, the R's reduce, reuse, recycle is really recycling is the end. It's yeah. the last thing we want you to do. Totally. So I want you to focus on things like bringing your own cup, bringing your own utensils. If you're getting takeout because it's coronavirus, just tell them I'm eating this at home. I don't need plastic utensils. Right. Right. right? Or, um, you know, and then it's about picking your packaging. Yeah. So if you are 
standing in the store and there's ketchup and one is in glass and one is in plastic, they're right next to each other, pick the glass one, right? Oh or if you are picking a drink out on the go, pick one that's in glass or aluminum, skip the plastic. Because it's easier to recycle those items or is it just more reusable? Both of those things. Okay, cool. Um, so glass and aluminum recycle very well. Uh, they recycle glass into glass into glass, right. aluminum into aluminum into aluminum. And actually aluminum is so difficult, excuse me, yeah. to mine yeah. that um, it gets recycled at a very high rate because it's very difficult okay. to, to get virgin product. Got it. Um, so aluminum is great for that. Plastic is terrible. Yeah. It's actually designed not to be recycled. And when, even when it does get recycled, it doesn't get recycled. It gets downcycled. So it goes down and down and down. And then eventually it's garbage and there's nothing you can do with so it. What, yeah. What, so uh, for example, a plastic water bottle, let's just use that as an example. So if you have a plastic water bottle and you put it in the recycling, um, it will maybe be become plastic film the next go around. Okay. So okay. like maybe something like a saran wrap or a Ziploc bag. Oh, well, that's or, very low. Cause you can't yeah, really or like packaging. Yeah. Right? Like some yeah. kind of like a, a, something around a package. And then that, if you recycle it um, in the proper way, which most people are not able to do, yeah. um, then it will be put um, like maybe into, have you seen the like wood planks that are made of plastic or like mm -hmm. park benches that are made mm -hmm. out of plastic? Yep, I have seen that. Yeah, so it might turn into that and then that's it. Yeah. Once yeah. there are those things, that's, that's the end of it. That's it. Yeah, plastic yeah. is a tough one. It's really um, everywhere. I, once it's you start everywhere. paying attention, it's like really hard to avoid it. It and is hard. Really hard. But I will tell you, it's hard that way on purpose. And I think that it's kind of important for people to understand what's happening here. Yeah. Um, this is going to be our generation's version of the tobacco companies. Totally. They have the plastics industry has intentionally set out to create a product that seems recyclable and in fact is not. Yeah. And so they have designed it to be cheaper. It's actually cheaper to make things from virgin plastic than it is recycled plastic. It's why you don't see recycled plastic hardly at all. And it's why there's not a good market for it. I just had a really visceral reaction to that. Statement. Yeah. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. It and sense. here's the other best part. I mean, best part, worst part, however you want to <laughs> Best and worst. Yeah. <laughs> like Plastic is made from oil. Plastic is made from oil. All this while, while these oil companies are saying, oh, it's okay that you're moving to electric vehicles. It's okay. It's okay. Cause we're addicting you to plastic. In other ways. Yeah. That's what it is. They're like, no big deal for us. We're going to keep on pulling this oil out of the ground and turning it into plastic instead of into car fuel. Yeah. Which plastic can never be digested from by the earth no ever everything else is some form of a natural product and plastic is not it can't it can't the, the earth can't swallow it up yeah it's made from dinosaur bones like <laughs> there's not that many left yeah <laughs> i know you know there's like a million reasons that plastic is terrible but i think that when you understand that there's a manipulation that's happening, it is a little bit easier to feel like I really don't want that. Yeah, you know? 100% agree. I've had many friends that have gone on plastic-free lifestyle uh, challenges. One friend did it with his family, which was next level amazing. Yeah. And um, so hard, so hard, so hard. They, they were able to do it before COVID too. So they were able to bring their own containers it, it to rest It was easier before COVID. It was easier before COVID. But I guess the, the message is if you have plastic, just reuse it as many times as you can, right? Yes, kind of. Okay. <laughs> so um, in a zero waste world, it, when you're just focused on waste, then that is absolutely the answer. But I'm really looking at everything mm -hmm. and plastic 
one of the many evils of plastic is that it leaches these endocrine disruptors. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's, it's full of really gnarly chemicals. And so I don't want you to have plastic touching your food ever. Yeah. I really like, and there are degrees to this, right? I mean, I will just keep saying this. You can't avoid plastic entirely. It's impossible. Yeah. You have to do the best you can. Yeah. And that's what I'm here to talk about is okay. do the best you can know that you're not going to be perfect. This yeah. idea about plastic free or zero waste, these are goals, but not really goals, right? They are, yeah. we're just trying to reduce waste, trying to reduce plastic. Yeah. But what I would love for people to do is if you have a product that you truly love and it only comes in plastic, call the company and say, I love your product. Man, I wish you would make it in not plastic because now I don't feel like I can buy it anymore. Yeah. And that matters. That yeah. makes a big difference. And then yes, on things that are plastic that don't touch your food, reuse them. The plastic container that your uh, to-go soup came in, although I really don't want you buying to-go soup in plastic containers um, <laughs> because pl plastic leaches even yeah. more than regular plastic, but right. whatever, something that's that <laughs> container, you get a plastic container for, from whatever, it's great storage for Legos or nuts and screws in the basement, totally. or, you know, you can keep your hair clips in it, or I don't care what, there's like a zillion organizing yep. storage components for yes. plastic products. Yes. Sure. Don't yep. buy new ones. For products. <laughs> right. Use what you've got. That's another like very easy Use trick, I think too. Like, yeah. Right. You reuse. So we started with stuff. reduce. Now we're going to reuse, reuse yeah. what you've got. Ask a friend, Hey, do you have any of these? Or, you know, like sharing is a big thing. Yeah. Um, when it comes to reducing stuff, like Maybe you don't need um, a whole bunch of plastic cups, reusable plastic cups. Maybe you just need like in your friend group, the party pack. Totally. Oh, I love right? that. Right? And, and it's like a basket that has all the plates and all the utensils and all the stuff. And it's made out of whatever you want it to be made out of. So you can use it in the backyard. And you say, the backyard party is at my house. Whoever has the basket, bring it. Love it. Love right? it. Yeah. So there's lots of ways to think about sharing and reducing. Facebook has done a really great job with these buy nothing groups oh. um, that you can, if you haven't checked out your local buy nothing group, okay. do sure. that. Do that. Yes. It is twofold. The best way to get rid of stuff. Yeah. Like sure. the best way. 100%. And it is a fantastic place to borrow, share, get what you need. Um, so like my kid a couple of years ago was like so excited to go to a NASCAR race. And I was like, I do not want to buy those big honker ear things like for one race. And then I have to keep them in the house. But I put it on by nothing. Hey, does anybody have these that I could borrow? Yeah, sure. Come pick them up. So awesome. It's such a great way. I mean, I even got rid of my old water heater on buy nothing. Wow. Like all kinds of stuff. I love it's it. It's fantastic. It's a great place for reuse. Awesome. And the idea is, is purely free or trade. Yes. Okay. It's just cool. about gifting. Cool. Um, and there is a whole great thing about like giving something you have that you don't want to somebody who needs it or wants that. it. Yeah. Like it, there's a whole emotional component there. That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always doing that with as much as I can, like I'm on next door. And so with my neighborhood, I'm constantly yes. like, Hey, I have this, my puppy grew out of this. Sophie grew out of that. Like, can someone use it, please? I'd I want someone to use it. And next door is a great place for that. Um, but I just say buy nothing. I mean, believe me, Facebook is not my favorite place for a million billion reasons. Um, yeah. and I, I try very hard not to go there, but for this particular purpose, I have not found another platform that works better and okay. it's really fantastic. That's such a good resource. Thank you for sharing that. And I'm sure they show up in all different cities. So, oh yeah. I mean, in San Francisco, there are ones that are neighborhood specific. Of course. There are ones that are yeah. just for families. Oh, like, cool. There's a million of them, right? And so yeah. the family ones, like there's all kinds of diaper things and all yeah. kinds of baby products. And cool. for, you know, it just, it runs the gamut. I love it. That's great. Sure. That's beautiful. We'll definitely share that. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, Oh, I love this. I love all of this. This is so good. Well, 
Um, thank you for sharing um, with my community and um, we'll put in your contact info, your website and all that stuff. But if you want to share like your Instagram, if you're on that or your Patreon, I know you're there. Yeah. Yeah. So my Instagram is um, sustainability underscore concierge. Um, and there is uh, kind of an archive of posts there that you can definitely go and check out, but I have moved my posting primarily to Patreon. Right. So you can find me there. I'm sustainability concierge, um, or you can contact me directly at my website. It's um, sustainabilityconcierge.com. And um, I would love to work with you. I would love to work with, with anybody. Um, and the next talk, we'll talk about resiliency because um, there is a component about preparedness and resiliency right. that goes with being sustainable. So when you go to my website, you'll see I offer holistic home, which is a whole lot of what we just talked about. And I also offer earthquake and emergency kits, which will be the next thing we talk about. I love it. It's like all the different ways to be mindful, not only of your own physical self, but your, your space that we're so present in right now and going to be for the foreseeable future. Yeah. So um, thank you for sharing those tips. Those are like amazing. They're easy. They are action oriented, which is, you know, practical, huge, huge bonus. Yeah. And yeah, I'd love to talk about um, preparedness because I, we share that we lived through the Loma Prieta earthquake. So we know, <laughs> we know yep. what that feels like. So thank you. Thank you, Friday. We'll, we'll share all your information. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you.